We're looking live here at Manchester, New Hampshire. It's been pretty quiet at this moment, but we have seen quite a scene of people to and from this polling station, one of many in the first primary in the 2024 U.S. presidential race. Iowa caucuses, of course, now we're into a New Hampshire primary, and the contest for the Republican nomination is down to Donald Trump and Nikki Haley. As per a long-standing tradition, the first votes were cast and counted at midnight in Dixville Notch. And a vote for Nikki Haley. Yeah. 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 Make it five out of six yeah. for Nikki Haley. Yeah. The question is, can she got to be a clean sweep? Waiting for the results. And a vote for Nikki Haley. Yeah. Nikki Haley, six out of six for Nikki Haley. It was a clean sweep and a good start for Nikki Haley. In fact, she issued a, a statement, her campaign, saying, a great start to a great day in New Hampshire. That's her view, but the latest polling tells a very different story about which candidate people in the state are expected to support. Alexander Panetta, one of our Washington correspondents, has been reporting out of Concord, New Hampshire, and he's there this morning with this latest on this Trump-Haley showdown today. If Nikki Haley could freeze time right now where she's leading Donald Trump 6 nothing in New Hampshire, she probably would, uh, because another 300,000 people or so are going to vote today. And this is the closest thing to a must-win state for her. Uh, it's, it's kind of tailor-made for the moderate candidate in a Republican race. This is the state that, uh, that uh, John McCain won against George Bush in 2000. It often does, uh, uh, does, uh, gives some momentum to the moderate because voters here are, are less evangelical, more moderate, and there's a, a quirk of the, of the system here. Some states in the United States allow what's called an open primary where non-Republicans can vote. And a lot of non-Republicans here are going to vote for Nikki Haley. So this is kind of tailor-made for her. And the question becomes, if she doesn't win here, where can she win? Uh, if, she, if she's incapable of slowing Donald Trump's coronation in this state, it's unlikely that it'll happen anywhere else. So that's an interesting use of the word because that's what she said. We don't have coronations in New Hampshire. We have elections. And so she's counting on that exact, that exact support. For her to, to claim success today, does she have to win outright? Could it be a narrow second? What is her benchmark, Alex, in, in order to be able to c carry on with her campaign? Yeah, so if the polls are correct, she's down anywhere between 12 and 20 points. If that uh, manifests itself tonight, I believe this campaign is over. And as a matter of fact, it would be one of the, if not the earliest conclusion to a contested uh, a primary in the modern era of open public primaries in American politics. Usually these things go through, you know, March, June maybe. Uh, you know, the end of January is unheard of uh, for the conclusion of a race. Now, if, if she, you know, loses by a couple of points, she may decide to soldier on to South Carolina. But even there, her path is not very, uh, very easy. You know, there's not a lot of polling from South Carolina, but she's, she's losing even worse there than she is here, and that's her own home state. Uh, and you, know, you can sort of see which way the wind is blowing by the fact that so many South Carolina politicians have endorsed Donald Trump. The governor, the lieutenant governor, the speaker of the House, U.S. Senator Tim Scott, all these people have been appearing with Donald Trump at events. And so the question for Nikki Haley, if she loses, even by a little bit here tonight, is does she want to continue and face the potential of being humiliated in her own state? 